Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do is show you how to um, solve and graph this absolute value inequality. Now, to do this, we need to create our two cases. And before we create our two cases, we've got to isolate the absolute value. So to do that, I need to undo all the operations that are happening to this kind of absolute value expression. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo addition and subtraction. So I have 4 absolute value of 2w plus 3 is less than or equal to 9, minus, or 9 plus 7 is going to be 16. Then I'll divide by 4 on both sides. And I have an absolute value of 2w plus 3 is less than or equal to 4. So now I have my two cases. And whenever you have, two, whenever you have an absolute value inequality and you're creating your two cases, you're going to create a compound inequality. And when you start off with less than an absolute value, which is less than or equal to 4, your compound inequality is going to be an and inequality. That means we're going to look for the intersection of our two cases. So I set up my two cases here, which is 2w plus 3 is less than or equal to 4. And 2w plus 3 is less than or equal oh, I'm sorry is greater than or equal to negative 4. right? Remember, we're setting up our two cases. We've got to do the positive and the negative. And when we create that negative, we've got to make sure we flip the sign. So now I solve each, and each one of these separately. So I have 2w is less than or equal to 1 divided by 2 divided by 2. w equals 1 half. And here I subtract 3, subtract 3. 2w is greater than or equal to a negative 7. Divide by 2, divide by 2, w is greater than or equal to a negative 7 halves. Um, that's less than or equal to. OK, so again, remember when we're dealing with an and, we're only concerned about where the two graphs intersect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph over here. And what I like to do is when I'm graphing a compound inequality as and, I'm going to graph them separately, and then I'm going to graph them together. Now. Uh, negative 7 halves is roughly like negative, or it's not roughly, it is negative 3.5 in decimal form. Two, three, four, five. So let's have 0, 0, 0. OK, 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I tried to go from negative 5 to negative 5. So you can see that each one of these are the case. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, if I'm going to graph w is less than or equal to 1 half, I go to 1 half, which would be around here, and I say all the terms that are less than or equal to. Well, since it's equal to 1 half, I'm going to fill that in, and it's going to be all the term, all the points to the left. w is greater than or equal to negative 7 halves, which is negative 3.5, 1, 2, 3.5. And this is saying all terms that are great, all numbers that are greater than. So that's going to be all numbers going this way. So therefore, you can see that these two inter only intersect between those two, between these values, right? So when I'm graphing the compound, the and, I'm going to go to 1 half, fill that in. I'm going to go to negative 3 halves, 1, 2, 3 half, fill that in. And I'm only going to shade in between them because that is the only portion of the graph where they're both true. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve and graph your compound inequality. Now, what I congratulate.